Hey everybody, <clears throat> I was, um, I've been watching some uh, comic book videos and unboxings and reviews and stuff like that that other content creators make and uh, <clears throat> I was thinking how could I go by about this a little bit differently and uh, maybe say something that hasn't been said and uh, that they haven't gone into um, and um, I will do reviews and and you know pricings and CGC unboxings and stuff like that as you've seen um, <clears throat> but I was thinking that uh, today I would start a a little blog I guess uh, is what you'd call it of uh, how comic books um, are very personal to each individual person and um, I don't I can't say what they are to everybody and I think everybody's um, um, each each individual's journey in the comic book reading community is is very different um, but I I think that um, first I'd like to say that um, I think that comic books are so personal because they are a very um, manual um, medium like you can touch it it's not like a movie or a TV show where you get you don't touch it and and actually and go through it um, it's more like a book where you actually hold it in your hands and and you uh, other than digital but you know um, and you go through it and uh, so it can kind of, it can kind of draw you in a little bit more than if you were just watched a movie or whatever <clears throat> um, another thing that I, I kind of am thinking about comic books is that um, a lot of people get into comic books or have gotten into comic books I'm not gonna say everybody because you know everybody's um, everybody's different in the in the way that they they've, they've uh, reached whatever they're doing um, <clears throat> but in my experience and knowing comic book fans um, is that they are a solitary um, thing and so if you've gone through your life and you <clears throat> maybe have had some some issues in your life and um, that uh, you can find comic books and and they can be comfort uh, they are definitely a comfort medium um, <clears throat> I would say that uh, divorce is a big uh, issue for a lot of people a lot of kids and the reason that they uh, get into comic books um, because there's a lot of insecurity in divorce and you feel insecure about your environment and your your surroundings and what's going to happen and um you can if you find a comic book that that resonates with you then you uh you can count on that comic book coming out every month and you can uh journey you can make your journey through life um the same time that the characters do um i know for me uh my parents got divorced and um when i was very young and maybe five or six and um then my mom went to uh, uh married another guy and um everything was was pretty good but i i was pretty uh insecure and and pretty uh solitary person kid um growing up and but i i was kind of late to comic books i i didn't really start reading them till you know 11 12 something like that um when <clears throat> my mom uh was divorcing her second husband um she um was going through a hard time and um she had me stay with my dad who was not married or anything um and so i stayed with him while she went off and uh tried to um do what she needed to do after her divorce with her with her husband and um i never felt any kind of um you know didn't feel bad about that i understood completely um but at the same time i kind of uh was a little bit lost because my dad is very uh business oriented and uh, he was he was kind of busy with that and so i had a lot of alone time and which i think a lot of comic book readers 
when they first maybe start reading comics, they they're alone a lot. They're kind of social outcasts. I think I think most comic book readers are social outcasts or have been when they started reading comics. Um, I'm not going to say that about everybody, but you know, for the most part, I think that's true. Um, so I can't, like I said, I can't really say what other people's journeys have been, but I, I can say my own. I was go actually going to uh, write an essay about um, my life and um, what was happening to me in my life in parallel with the X-Men. Like when I, um, if I was having trouble with a girlfriend, what was the, what were the, what was happening in the X-Men? If I uh, got a girlfriend, what was, what was going on with them? Because it's been going on for a long time, every month, nonstop, and um, their lives and their um, trials and tribulations were definitely parallel with mine. And I can, I can remember more consistently the things that happen in those books when I'm having a hard time in my life than if everything's going great. Um, there are, you know, they're great stories. There, there's, uh, you know, great stuff going on in all comics. Um, but the ones that resonate with you the most are the ones when you're are having a, a difficult time in life. It's just like a, a song. You know, the ones that you cherish the most are the ones that you, you, you know, you break up with your girlfriend and you listen to a song over and over and over and over again. I've done that. Everybody's done that. And I, it's the same thing, I think, with comic books, or at least it has been with me. You know, I would read, you know, issues over and over again, you know, when I was feeling bad or whatever. Um, but so I'm going to kind of start with um, where I entered reading comic books. Um, because I'm going to talk about my journey and what I've gone through. And, um, if you guys have gone through similar, then let me know. Um, first I started reading, um, Savage Sword of Conan, <clears throat> which for some crazy reason, I don't have any. Um, I, but I read like maybe three or four or five issues of that and I enjoy it. I love, I love Conan now. I think at the time I didn't really understand Conan. I just thought it was, you know, kind of like the movie and a big brawny muscle guy with some fantastical adventures and scantily clad women. And so I, when I, I kind of wanted more, um, the black and white just wasn't fulfilling what I needed. And so I was, I would go down to the local bookstore called Mr. Paperback and I would look over the comics every month, but nothing really caught my eye. Um, and then finally, I was looking at this, X-Men 198. And <clears throat> I remember when I was younger, um, I had seen an X-Men comic, and I got it through somewhere, and I must have been like eight or nine or something like that. Um, and it had Nightcrawler and it had Wolverine, um, and they were... Um, in the, the yard of the X mansion or whatever. And I think they were doing some kind of training exercise, but the way it was drawn and the way it was, um, portrayed and everything, uh, it was very dark for me and it was almost scary. And, um, at the time it, it was a turnoff because it was so scary because my young undeveloped mind didn't really know what was going on. But as I grew older, I, I kind of realized that the scariness of the X-Men is what draws me to it. Um, it's probably the scariest comic out there uh, when you think about it, because all of the things that happened to them and uh, what has drawn so many millions of people to the X-Men is that they're outcasts and uh, they're attacked by, by other people. And uh, everybody feels like an outcast. That's why the Harry Potter books are so so popular and uh, movies are so popular because he's an outcast and everybody feels like that. So <clears throat> I got, I looked at 198 on the rack. It wasn't a rack. It was a shelf or whatever with all the comics. And I thought it looked disgusting. I didn't understand how um, it looked good at all. Um, I would look through it and it's looked all of these lines and these streaky lines and it's, it's very 
um, bleak and dark. And uh, I just could not, didn't want to get it. It was, it, I, I was kind of turned off. So, um, but now, Barry Windsor Smith is like in my top 10, maybe top five comic book uh, artists of all time. He is just friggin' phenomenal. He's one of the best. And, but at the time, my teeny tiny little artistic brain could not understand why this would be fantastic. I don't know why I couldn't, but I, I couldn't. I just, I had to grow. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with um, growing and and learning. Um, so this was when I was with my dad. And I was living in the house that we originally lived in before my mom and dad got divorced. <clears throat> it was a this big, green, scary building up on a hill uh, called Highland Avenue. And uh, it was very creepy. And my mom had told me that uh, it was haunted. And I believed that until I was like 21 because she kept saying that, you know, scary things would happen. Like um, they would have clocks with no inner workings that would chime in, in the middle of the night. And um, that uh, the upstairs neighbor um, killed himself because his wife was cheating on him called Mr. Brown. Like I think she said he hung himself or something. Um, and I believe that. Um, Knowing now that my mom is a little bit of a storyteller and uh, some of the things that she tells me I have to take with a grain of salt and um, but it it was it's, it's kind of a creepy place and um, like I said I was alone a lot <clears throat> kind of living a solitary life just going back and forth to school and not really having a lot of friends because I I moved away from where I was living and the whole transition of my mom getting divorced from her husband and it, it was a difficult time. <clears throat> so then I went and I picked up X-Men 199. <clears throat> and I liked it. I mean, the cover is nice. Uh, um, the art, John Romano Jr. is obviously fantastic. Um, but I didn't love it. I, I, I didn't love it. It didn't, it didn't grab me. I mean, I like the story. Um, but who are these characters? You know, who is this Cyclops? Who is this, this Rachel? And, you know, what, what is going on with the story? I, when you start reading a comic, if you don't know what the story is about, um, and you don't know the characters, there has to be a hook. There has to be something that's going to grab you and pull you in. It doesn't matter, you know, doesn't matter what it is. It could be the art. And the art is certainly amazing. And that's probably why I got the next issue. Um, um, I This is a fantastic story and fantastic art. And the Phoenix is certainly, was certainly a um, an interesting character, Rachel as the Phoenix, even though I, I had no idea what was going on and who, who these people were. I hadn't, you know, been hooked into their life yet. Um, so... I went on, and the next month, I got 200. The Trial of Magneto. Um, I called him Magneto. Always will. Always have. He's Magneto to me. But, you know, I guess he's Magneto. Whatever. Uh, this issue is what, what grabbed me. Um, don't really know why this one did more than the, the 199. Um... But yeah, it, it 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 hooked me in. I can actually remember the very line that um, they say in the comic that got me got me excited, um, or got me hooked into the X Men. Um, it's they're waiting for the trial of Magneto, and um, yep, here it is. Um, they're waiting for th something to happen, you know, some brotherhood to attack and free Magneto and stuff like this. And it says, all quiet, Cyclops. I don't scan a hostile thought pattern anywhere near this airbase. Thanks, Ray. And that's, uh, you know, Cyclops and Rachel. And then Storm and Rogue are boring. Be patient, Rogue. And this is what gets me. Got me. I don't know why, but it did. 
Ain't one of my virtue storm. This girl is an all-out action junkie. That did it. I don't know why. I don't know why one line can can turn your your thoughts and your imagination and your creativity in one direction. But I was hooked from then on in. Um, that was what year was that? 1985. That was when I got hooked with the X-Men. And uh, so that's what I'm going to go and do from now on a little bit. Uh, once in a while is uh, continue my, my blog on where these comics became personal to me. And um, I think a lot of people have that personalized story in their life. You know, maybe they were abused or something and, and you know, they got a Spider-Man and, and it helped them through it. And I think, you know, hopefully we can explore this. Um, so until next week, I'll talk to you guys later.